How's it going everybody? Welcome to another episode of Smartphone World. I want to start off by apologizing for not having this video up yesterday, but I am coming off of the worst flu imaginable. So if my voice sounds a little deeper than normal, that's why. Okay, well, day three of CES came and went, and Samsung definitely surprised me. I mean, they had a a couple of keynotes that they did in during CES, but I mean, one of them was for their TV. Those TVs look crazy. Did you see those new smart TVs from Samsung? Those are pretty insane. But we will get to CES again. More information for a low-end iPhone came out. They're not going to call it the mini iPhone, I don't think. I think uh, it's just going to be a lower-end iPhone. And now they're saying that it's going to have a uh, polycarbonate shell. It's probably going to look like the iPhone 3GS. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I definitely believe that Apple is trying to copy Samsung. And I will show you how I come up with that in a little bit. Uh, but this new iPhone 5, I don't even know what they would call it. It wouldn't be the 5S. The 5S would have to have better specifications. This one they're saying it's going to have a 5-inch screen but lower specs on the inside. So doesn't sound too great to me. All right, well, uh, let's talk about Samsung and the CES. They introduced us to their new processor, their new Xenos processor. I mean, we did. We just saw the Snapdragon, the uh, 600 and 800 series, and those things are insane. Same thing with the Tegra 4, I mean, with its 72 graphic cores. But this new Xenos 5, I think they're calling it? Well, Xenos 5 Octa. It's supposed to use 70% less power. It is going to be a quad core. They're saying it's going to be over 2 gigs. So expect something around anywhere between 2.2 gigs and 2.5 gigs is what I've been noticing. And uh, like another company, STE, they just came out with their Nova Thor L8580 chipset. <laughs> it's a quad core chipset. And let me just tell you guys, this thing's going to be able to support a lot. I mean, this one was clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. So it's a quad core 2.5 gigahertz. It's going to be able to handle 3 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's going to be able to handle resolutions of 1920 by 1200. This is going to be an insane chipset. I can't believe all these companies that are just bringing us some great technology for the new smartphones that are going to be, you know, showing their faces in 2013. Now, I have had some questions about when I think these chipsets, like the Xenos and the Snapdragon 600 and 800 series, the Tegra 4, this STE, when do you guys think it will be hitting our smartphones? Well, there's a possibility that we could see a smartphone or two coming out with one of these chipsets during the Mobile World Congress, but I wouldn't think to see these chipsets to be in all smartphones yet, probably by the second quarter, closer to the third quarter, we'll start seeing all smartphones coming out with this. Now, do I think the Galaxy S4 will have that new Xenos 5 Octa? Maybe. And if it does, it's going to be insane. And we also have the Note 3 that they're going to be showing off at the Mobile World Congress. So if that one has this chipset, you could definitely start seeing some, well, number one, better displays from Samsung, uh, some faster processing than even the Galaxy S3 or Galaxy S2, which is insane. Now, going back to Samsung, why they're doing stuff like this, I have no idea. Uh, but this is where Apple will come in and start copying them. Samsung just unveiled the Galaxy S2 Plus. Okay, we have the Galaxy S3 out, and they're making the Galaxy S2 Plus. The Galaxy S2 Plus, well, the only great thing that I can say about it is that it's running Android Jelly Bean. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 
But other than that, I mean, one gig of RAM, eight megapixel camera, one point two gigahertz dual core processor. Now I have a Galaxy S2 right here. This is the Skyrocket Edition, but this has a one point five gigahertz dual core processor, one gig RAM. This new phone that's coming out, it's I don't understand. It still has less specifications than mine, and this thing is over a year old. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, what Samsung's thinking is, maybe they want to bring the Galaxy S2 Plus at a cheaper price than the Galaxy S3 or the future Galaxy S4 into countries that, you know, it would, they want to try to bump up sales. Now, having a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display, I, I'm not understanding. We have all these new smartphones coming out, and this is what they decide to unveil. I guess they're trying to keep everything, you know, centered around their new processing chip to bring out the news about that. And at the Mobile World Congress, we should see some crazy stuff from Samsung. We'll definitely have to just sit around and wait. All right, now let's talk about Lenovo. They've never really surprised me with any type of smartphone or great great technology inside their stuff. They never really did until now, the K900. This thing is pretty crazy. It's only 162 grams and it's a 5.5 inch display. So believe it or not, that is light. It has the 1080, 1080p Super IPS display. It has, oh, it's under seven millimeters thick. That's crazy. That's thinner than my phone, and that thing has a 5.5 inch screen. Well, it has a uh, 13 megapixel camera with the Sony Exmor BSI sensor. It is a f1.8 lens. They went a little smaller than the 2.0 or 2.2 that you normally see coming out, and they're bragging about on smartphones, but this adds to the lightweight. 440 PPI display, oh no, 400 PPI display. It looks so thin. I mean, I can't believe how thin that thing is. And it kind of has like a Nokia look to it, I would say. But the way that screen looks and how thick it is, that is a pretty crazy phone. Now, I don't think it's ever going to hit the US or Canada. It's probably going to be in Asia. India, that whole area over there? Yeah. I definitely see this one going out all over there. But that's not the only thing that Lenovo was bragging about. I mean, they also came out with a 4.5 inch that has a IPS LCD screen, 245 PPI, so it is a lesser. It only has ice cream sandwich, 2000 mAh battery, and it's almost 10 millimeters thick. Not too impressive. This is exactly what I was expecting from Lenovo. Another, I mean, 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor running ice cream sandwich, 2000 mAh, 4.5 inch screen, 218 PPI. These aren't terrific, uh, but they're dual SIM. So expect them again in China, India, that whole area over there where a lot of people really utilize that dual SIM technology. The last phone that I want to talk about today is the ZTE, the Grand S. <laughs> I so love this phone. I want, I want to get my hands on it, but it looks like I'm going to have to order it from China because that's where they're going to be pumping this one out. It looks so nice. I mean, that thing is crazy. 5-inch 1080p display powered by the 1.7 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 Pro processor. That's the quad-core. Yeah, the one that everybody loves. 1.7 gigahertz quad core. Two gigs of RAM, 16 gig, uh, gigabytes of internal. It's coming running Jelly Bean. This thing is insane. I mean, China is getting all the phones. You can't expect ZTE if this one takes off in China to start branching out, hopefully bringing us some of their higher line smartphones that we want to check out. But we're going to have to wait and see. Thanks a lot, everybody, for tuning in to the third day of the uh, 
big Vegas event that really did not shock me with anything except processing power. I will be putting out another episode to wrap up the entire CES and tell you exactly what the small things that I missed, other things that I didn't really care to talk about at the time. And thank you again. Please give me some comments. Click like, share with your friends. Have a great day.